okay just for a bit of a um intro just to kind of contextualize this a little bit um i'm going to make the journey via google maps from where i live to the studio or what was the studio um and kind of along the way there's various things i see that i'm going to talk about um and reference other things um and just kind of to put it out there my main interest is people people together um how people experience uh, the space around them uh, public space particularly um and thinking about that sort of thing so hopefully that gives a slight insight into what is going on uh, but here we go so we will start here in Whittington this is where I'm very lucky to live um we'll start at my house and something quite funny about this is that the pace is quite weird it's like too fast to walk too fast to cycle but too slow to drive um and also it's super sunny which is strange Every, all the trees are green and there are people walking around which feels super alien um right now it's very yeah digital world-esque um but as i leave my house i have this park um coming up on the right called old mate park um and i found parks really interesting they're like this you know designated open space and they're one of the kind of few remaining places uh, within the world we live in where you're just kind of free to exist as you do um and it's referenced by jenny odell in her book well it was an essay then a book how to do nothing um in which she says a public non-commercial space demands nothing from you in order for you to enter nor for you to stay the most obvious difference between public space and other spaces that you don't have to buy anything or pretend to want to buy something to be there um yeah, I often think about the trees in the park too and yeah, that sort of thing. But what I like about Jenny Adell is well, the way she talks about it. She's mainly interested in the attention economy, um, but she's interested in things that frame what is already there rather than creating something new, such as Scott Poe lacks applause and courage, Berlin of Ovil- of Oliver Ross's deep listening and Eleanor Coppola's windows and it's like casting a light on work where it already exists um in the world it already exists in um you know naturally thinking about Alan Capro and art as life and life as art um but we'll come to a group of people walking together and I don't know where they're going or where they come from um but walking isn't my main practice but it's a great input and output um and i recall reading wanderlust by rebecca solnit a while back and of course there's guideboard and psychogeography um and i often think a tour format would have been a great way for for me for doing um just like san francisco city guides program back in the 70s or lucy gunning's mirror walk or rebecca by Bar- corridor research walks um but it's funny seeing all these people together like it makes me think of Nick Sanderland's The People video. Um, maybe they're just commuting those guys and like commuting is migration, just like localized. Think of uh, Lowry coming from the mill, um, or Kerry Young's deceptive Alliance Bay by walking. Um, but when we go down this road we will pass under these trees which depending on the season and the weather they kind of together or apart um and it makes me think about uh, last year where i lived in my bedroom it was shaded uh, throughout the day by this tree outside um and i went away for the weekend and came back and there was a stump in its place it had all been cut down um and i guess that kind of set me on this path of thinking about trees and I don't know, people call it urban forestry, trees in cities. And I think of projects like David Hockney's Seven Yorkshire Landscapes and Jan, Jan Wang Preston's uh, it's like photographic storytelling of trees in the time of globalisation in China and Joseph Boyce's Seven Thousand Oak Trees, of course. Um, but as we go down, and we'll take a right at the end of this road to go down Lloyd Street South, um, you'll realise kind of it gets super barren the more we go along super bare of trees um and planting is so undemocratic like coverage across the city um varies so much especially a big factor is wealth or lack of um and i think that kind of data is super interesting it's a shame it's a lot hard it's really hard to find there's not more of it maybe um and you instantly think where there's not trees, people would want more trees, but it's not always the case. Um, there's a survey from 1997, so a good while ago now. Um, but people cite various reasons for not wanting more trees. Um, and we'll come up some bin men on the left in a little bit. Um, people doing maintenance and upkeep. And yeah, it's funny having this global pandemic. Like 
these people have been relegated to being unskilled for a really long time and now people it's like people suddenly realize what's what's really happening and who really yeah keeps the world spinning um and I think I've long been interested in people maintaining a place. And I think of Francis Elise's painting slash retouch and Claire Bundle Jones's tumbleweed. I think it's, yeah, it has to be done well, um, this kind of work. It's, I think, easy to get it wrong. Um, but I think they do really good work. And the best thing I've found for a really long time was Merla Lederman Euclid's Manifesto for Maintenance Art, which is just brilliant. Uh, she talks about everyone wanting everything new all the time. No one wants to look after what's already existing. Um, she says, after the generation, after the revolution, who's going to pick up the garbage on Monday morning? And it's a gendered question too. Um, and her work with the New York Sandmen was great. And I especially enjoyed the mirrored bin lorry. Um, she was like an artist in residence at local authority level. And it's like that show on Channel 4 a while ago, or Becky Shaw's Hiding in Plain Sight. Um, but I think a lot about why does Manchester have the reputation it does around trees? Um, I spent a while with the city archives, didn't really know what I was looking for, but it's maybe something to do with its environmental history. I looked at a lot of maps and old council notes and plans, and trees are a really hot topic right now, um, and tree planting even hotter. Um, in the election had just gone in 2019, everyone was making these big tree planting promises, even, even the Tories, but, you know, you can't just plant a tree in tarmac and expect it to grow. You, who's looking after the existing ones? Um, I found this TED talk by a guy, it's a tree officer, um, and they experience the same savage cuts um, at local government level as every other department. That's not really a department because it's now only four people looking after all the trees in Greater Manchester. Um, but I spoke to Joe Walsh, who oversees oversees the four of them. Well, he's one of the four, um, and put together a transcript from our call. And I would have liked to have worked with them more, maybe been in an artist in residence or something like that. Uh, I think of Amy Balkins reading the IPC, something like a middleman between the public and what those guys do, and being the line of communication between the two, like Kerry Young's conflict management or Mayor for 10 Minutes by Actopolis. Um, or something more kind of public facing like John Harris is anywhere but Westminster or Henry Crisho's Peckham is your area changing. Maybe that's just what a local councillor is. Um, but kind of on this route, it's quite funny because it seems really traffic dominant and it is. But it, for many people, it's actually their front garden. Um, there's many houses that line the route we've just gone down. Um, and front gardens are like you know, more important than ever, people notice having one or not having one more than ever. And Jan Jell talks about it in Life Between Buildings, this importance of having um, a space that's both semi-public and semi-private and gives a sense of authority, a right, a right to a space. Um, but those without one often rely on other public spaces to access green space. Um, and this is just more contentious than ever. You know, they seem to be economically unproductive and are being cut across the country and the loss of Moorside Fields last year as a village green proved just that. Um, and, you know, you don't have to look too far. It's happening right here too, like at Rye Bank Fields. Um, and north of the city centre is Oak Valley, 600 hectares of wild land, um, one of the last areas of unbuilt space, so close to the city centre. Um, I began working with Grace Conway, who's an architecture student, to maybe activate the space. And I never visited the site, but there's a guy, Martin Zero, who on YouTube has made several videos about it and its history. And we talked of wasteland twinning and we were interested in the nature of land, um, thinking about Isabella Tree's Wilding book, which I listened to um, on audiobook. And we thought about maybe making an inventory or something physical like a publication, uh, maybe Ruth Beale's Everyday Resourcefulness or the Fruitful Futures Pomona um, publication um, or Urban Open Spaces pamphlet. We could have done something like Scott Polak's Applause and Courage, uh, framing what was already there. Maybe something like Yenka Castellane's Walking with Chairs or Kaylee Semester's The Most Boring Spot. And an audio tour or self-guided one like Amy Valkin's Invisible Five, Flexion of Sunderland's The Hum, um, The Ancient Tree Forum's Trail of Epping Forest. Or a workshop would have been good too, like Rebecca Byrne Arts Bureau of Urban Wilds or The Architecture School for Children. Um, and just finally, another thing I was working towards was something more to do with urban intervention, and it was transforming bus stops um, for commuters, first being a jazz bar, like Ji Chen's Garden Stroll, moving 
things away from the hostile architecture that usually exists for people uh, waiting in a place. Um, and all this stuff I've collected and I've thought about things like Wolfgang, Wolfgang Tillman's True Study Centre or, or Olaf Eliasson's Walls of Information, um, maybe getting rid of the white walls, thinking about this uh, Cornelia Parker's picture she put up of a brick wall with all this research. Uh, but for now, we're arriving at the studio and, and I'm doing this course on the Open University called Changing Cities, but it kind of has never felt less relevant. Uh, it's, a lot of the information feels pretty irrelevant right now. And I think back to Pauline Alterton um, and her measuring the distance between two people sat on separate benches and she's never seemed so ahead of her time. <laughs>